hostages in exchange for Palestinian uh, prisoners. Well, for more on the diplomatic manoeuvrings, I'm, I've been joined by Mohammed Taha from the BBC Arabic service. Um, Mohammed, lovely to see you this morning. Let's start off with that meeting yesterday. What essentially was the outcome between Mr Blinken and Mr Netanyahu? We saw some differences between the both parties regarding the Rafah operation. Uh, uh, Mr. Netanyahu saying that he will go to do a Rafah operation, whether the posing fighting will happen or not. And Mr. Blinken confirmed that the U.S. would never agree uh, an operation uh, in Rafah with more than one million refugees are there. So there are some differences there. But the, Benjamin Netanyahu's uh, uh, statement is really alarming in the time that everybody is waiting for Hamas response on the Israeli proposals regarding uh, the, the truce. Uh, if he's saying he will go to Rafah, whether there will be opposing fighting or not, so why on earth Hamas would accept opposing fighting if they will, if they are invited to hand over uh, the hostages voluntarily, accept the uh, Israeli military presence in Gaza voluntarily, and uh, and expecting once the opposing fighting would finish, that Israel would would make. Um, uh, 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 an operation in Rafah that it looks like that uh, Netanyahu is inviting Hamas to refuse the opposing fighting. Okay, so with all that uncertainty, all those questions, Mohammed, um, those strikes, some strikes have continued on Rafah, of course. What are those that have seek, sought refuge in Rafah doing? Where could they possibly go? Very quickly. Yeah, this this is. This is what uh, uh, the United States want really uh, Israel to give assurances. Are they going to cross to Egypt? Are they going to be returned back to their homes in the north? And Khan Yunis, are they going to build another refugee camp somewhere else? There is no assurance from the Israeli side where these refugees would go if they would attack Rafah. And we saw overnight attacks on Rafah uh, left more than 30 people died in Rafah and in Nusairat. So this operation is going on. Mohamed Taha, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. you are watching BBC News.